Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to do a follow up on the Barboza uh, story with the, talking about J.R. Russo. He's actually the man that whacked um, Joe Barboza, hit him four times with a shotgun in San Francisco. So I'm going to talk a little about Joe and Joe coming up with the mob and um, some of the problems that were happening in the 80s and the early 90s with the Petriaca family. So I'll be right back after this commercial. All right, let's talk a little more about Joe Russo. You can see him over my head right there with the scally cap on next to Larry Zanino. Jerry and Julo on one side, and you could see um, Joe Barboza on the other. I like this little uh, collage that I made of these guys. These are the guys that I, well, besides Barboza, you know, these are the guys that I grew up around and, and I knew. But today we're going to talk about uh, J.R. J.R. was born in East Boston in 1931, of course, to Italian parents. Um, by the time Joe was in his 20s, um, well, there's a confliction. Some papers say he was born in 1935. But by the time Joe was in his 20s, Raymond Petriaca had taken over the uh, New England family. Now, you got to remember, Joe grew up in a time there was a faction of, of uh, the mafia in the North End in Boston. There was an East Boston faction, and there was a Rhode Island faction. Sometime before the 50s, all the factions reunited, and that's when they became the New England crime family. Raymond Petriaca took it over 54-55, uh, and he became the boss of the family. So Joe in his 20s came up with Raymond Petriaca, Sammy Granito, Jerry and Julo, you know, all these infamous guys, Larry Bioni. And they say the captain and the East Boston crew was uh, Sammy Granito, and uh, Sammy Granito passed away years ago. Um, good man, La Cosa Nostra, and uh, Joe came up that. Now, we know that in 1976, Barboza got released from prison. You know, they blamed Barboza again, 26 murders and more in, in the witness protection program. And uh, this guy just won't stop. Yeah, he got out, back out of prison in 1975. The New England mob found out where he was, East Coast mob. Joe Russo goes to San Francisco in 76. Uh, just, a, just a brief um, reminder that uh, Barbosa was called into a meeting. As he walked out of the meeting, supposedly Joe Russo jumped out of a van with a shotgun and a pump four at the Barbosa. Now, to me, now, don't get me wrong. I think the greatest hit ever was Paul Castellano. We know that, you know, but for these guys to go across the country, find him and whack Joe Barboza, one of the most infamous hitmen that ever came out of Boston. I mean, that was an accomplishment. That was something, you know, so um, Joe Russo did that. But I'll tell you, there were other things going on, too. When Joe Russo came back after the hit, there were problems. You know, he was hot. I heard other families found out what he did. Uh which was great, idolized by that, but other mob figures. You know, Joe was a man. He was the man, and he whacked Bob Boza. And that brought him way up on the ladder. Now, Joe, and I know this for sure, in the late 70s, took off. He was hiding in New York, even, even a part of Canada, I was told. We got to remember, there was a banana crew up there that they used to come to Boston. They were friends with Joe. So I'm sure they hit him up there, too. And I got from a good source that he was up in Canada, too. What happened, Sammy Granito um, got arrested with the rest of the guys. When that happened, uh, they called Joe back. And Joe moved up and became the copper when he's Boston. And Joe was over some serious guys there. Anthony Spocky Spagnola. Vincent Didi Giacomo. And his half-brother, Bobby Carrozza. These guys were fair guys. These guys put in a lot of work. 
that was a real dangerous crew that was under Joe at the time. And, um, you know, Joe had a lot of muscle. Now what happens, when Raymond Sr. dies, we all know the story, Raymond Jr. takes over. He demotes Jerry and Julo to a soldier who was the underboss of the family because he was bucking up to be boss. And he gets Larry Zanino, I would say the second most powerful guy in Boston, pumps him up the consigliere. So at this time, Larry Zanino is the consigliere. Junior has the throne. And Wild Bill Grasso is the underboss. And everybody knows some stories that Wild Bill was actually running the family. And this didn't fit well with the Boston guys. It didn't fit well with Joe Russo, Vinny Ferrara, and Bobby Carrozzo, and the other guys. So what happens, uh, Larry Zanino and Jerry, they both went away. And uh, that little voids there, Grasso's using Frankie Salemi to go back and forth with messages. And uh, it upset the Boston guys. Now, the real strength, the real strength for the Patriarca family was in Boston. There were a lot of hitters up there. I just mentioned several of them. So what Joe does, and Vinnie Ferrara and, and a, several other guys, they make their plan. They're going to take out Billy Grasso, which they did. With help with that. They got help with that. They took out Billy Grasso. And they made an attempt on Frankie Salami, his own boy. So that attempt on Frankie Salami, we know Frankie lived, drove himself to the hospital. The hit went down bad. And, uh, you know, they blame, they blame uh, Rico Ponzo and uh, Gigi Portella for that hit. Supposedly, Gigi was driving the car and Rico Ponzo was the shooter. But it was never proven in court. So I don't want to say too much more about that. Uh, so anyway, um, now at this point, I know that John Gotti and Sammy DeBull got involved in this. I know they came down from New York. Uh, Johnny really respected Raymond Sr., Patriarca. And he told them hands off on the kid. They weren't allowed to whack uh, Raymond Jr. So Joe sat with them. Vinny, they sat down and they decided to have a meeting. Joe got pumped up to uh, Consul Yer. His brother, Bobby Carroza, got pumped up to captain. So they all got elevated. Vinny Ferraro was a captain in the North then. And there was a little harmony there. So to make peace, they offered Joe, put a meeting together. And we know about that meeting that happened in Medford. All right, so now, after the shooting of Wild Bill, Frankie Salami, uh, Raymond Jr., get together with uh, Joe Russo and the rest of the guys, try to keep the peace and put the family back together. Like I said earlier, they made Joe Russo consigliere, which made him the boss of Boston. And uh, his brother, Bobby, got pushed up, uh, bumped up the cobble. So they had this meeting in October of uh, 1998. And unfortunately, again, we're going to go back to Stevie Fleming. And we're going to go back to uh, Whitey Bulger, Sonny McCurial. Sonny McCurial was an informant. I talked about this on an earlier show. Gave the FBI everything. This crew. And um, they bugged the house on Guile Street. I, got a, I have an aerial photograph of where the meeting took place on Guile Street in uh where the FBI was set up and where they were taking pictures from. So you see here, 34 Guile Street was the house. It, it was owned by um, Vinnie Federico's uh, sister. He was made on that day. He was out on a furlough. So they wired the house. They were at 16 Gill Street. Nice neighbors, huh? And they were across the street taking pictures of everybody coming in and out. So they got them called that day. Um, we know about the introduction, the whole thing was taped and it was an embarrassment for Boston and the Patriarca family. They get Maddie, uh, Hugo Medi, who now today is the underboss of the Patriarca family. As we speak, they get him, his picture. They get Raymond Jr.'s picture. They get Joe Russo's picture, Bobby Carroza's picture. I know that, uh, Didi was there. We know Vinnie Federico, Richie Ferramo. Uh, these are all good guys there. You know, I, I knew all these guys at that time. You know, I wasn't involved at that time, but I knew all these guys, who they were. And uh, so at that point, um, now, because there was a wide open investigation on Joe Russo, Vinnie Ferrara, and the guys in the North End, 
at that point, uh, you know, Joe's the consigliere, he's the boss, but in 91, they all get pinched. Ferrara, Joe Russo, the rest of they all get pinched. Then Joe ends up pleading out to um, a 16-year bit. He pleaded guilty to extortion, murder, gambling, the whole gamut, you know, when he got 16 years. So Joe Russo gets the 16 years. Joe Russo passes away in uh, June of 1998. And I remember that I was on the street. I was actually w with Didi when, you know, I heard about that. And, um, you know, Bobby Carroza wanted us to go to the funeral, but uh, we didn't go because we knew how much heat was there. So we stood away from that. I, I believe I sent flowers. I don't remember. Because I had a high respect for Joe Russo. You know, none of these men were perfect. They all had their own personal problems, you know, but uh, Joe Russo was the man. He's a legend in Boston. He killed Bob Boza. And uh, I just wanted to give him the respect and do this follow-up. So I hope you enjoyed the show. There's uh, many more coming. So stay tuned. Thank you.